who, who knows? Yeah, some, some, some happy people. Wow, I think I think we should really be excited and welcome people to our, our episode today. Okay, let's first be excited and then welcome them. Yes. Uh, welcome to another episode of What is the Premise? Today we're going to talk about something near and dear to every pastor's heart. I mean, you're going to really get a chance to uh, learn from, from a, you know, a seasoned veteran today, a seasoned veteran about one of the pastoral acts. It's not a sacrament in the Lutheran Church, not, not a sacrament, but it is a blessed estate. Yes, it is. We're going to talk about to marriage. Today. Marriage. Marriage. And, and specifically and, weddings, because oh, marriage, oh, weddings. marriage are really big topics. So. <laughs> well, I, that's a great, great uh, thing. I had somebody tell me, you know, they, they had a different definition of what a marriage was. But what is a wedding? Both a wedding and a marriage are something to pray over. <sighs> are you wanting to pray today? I do want to pray. Let's do it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you set the solitary in families. You have made us such that we recognize that it is not good for us to be alone. And you have brought us together in marriage. And the way that we begin these is with the wonderful rite of the wedding. Be with us pastors that we may speak in a pastoral way about our experiences with weddings and uh, and not uh, not speak so negatively about them as we might be inclined to do. <laughs> In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, a, a, well, a, Jesus, a, a prayer that gets oh, us laughing. That's, I love uh, it. Well, you know, one of the prayers that I pray at the beginning of it is, "As you gladden the wedding at Cana, so to yes. now gladden this uh, wedding right. with your presence." And, and, and so, so gladden you know, this Jesus, conversation. Jesus, you know, okay, and even bless the wedding with the, with his first miracle. That's exactly right. And so, in answer to your question, you know, what is a marriage? That's, you know. Two people coming together, uh, making vows of lifetime fidelity. I love it. Right. So, you know, in the eyes of the state of California, it's really not about love. It's about a corporation. There's a business arrangement there. But what is a wedding ceremony then? Or what is it? The wedding is the, is the, the way that, in, according to the Lutheran theology yeah. of, of weddings, uh, the two people bind themselves together oh, by their vows. Oh, I love this. A binding. And I didn't realize we were into bondage. Oh, Marital bondage here. Uh, oh, binding. <laughs> well, I, um, I, I thought you were going to go, you know, a wedding is a worship service. I, you know, in my first call, we had a, you know, a booklet that you gave to all prospective people who said, hey, can I get married at your church? And you'd say, well, read this first. <laughs> and then they would look at, you know, how much it was going to cost and That's look right. at some of the rules and requirements, you know, no drinking, you know, at the church. That was usually one of the things where people were like, yeah, we're out of here. We're definitely, at least we're not going to do the reception here. We'll maybe do the ceremony. We'll just drink in the parking lot on the way before. No, but groomsmen <laughs> smoking in the sacristy. No, no, right. they had to go across the street is what the, right. you know, the wedding coordinator said. No, not even on church grounds. So it was interesting. If you were just a member, you could smoke outside the front door. But if you were there for a wedding, you had to go across the street, man. There were So when I showed up for the ceremony. So membership does have some privileges. Oh, well, it is. not when the wedding coordinator was there. But this idea that, that a, 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 a wedding is a worship service. It is. We even had in our, you know, little booklet, it said, you know, no flash photography during the ceremony. No flash photography. I told the photographers I they, could break, they could break that rule oh, no mind. matter what. I had told them, hey, just, <laughs> whatever. It's just, if you get a good one, give, give me a copy for promotional value. And so I, I always said, you know, uh, there's uh, never, you know, something that we can't survive. I said, I'm a professional. I'll, I'll find my way. Have you, have you had anything bad happen at a wedding that makes you dislike them so much? Well, it, it's true. I, I do dislike weddings. In fact, I... <laughs> I, I went, what about your own wedding? Did you I, dislike your I own a, wedding? Oh no, I loved that. Oh, okay. although one of my uh, one of my great aunts was heard to say after the wedding that she would never complain about a Roman Catholic <laughs> wedding again. How long was it? It was it, it was long. Oh my god! We, we threw everything. Were there in trumpets? There. 
No, no. Oh, see, that's my favorite. I like it when there's a trumpet or, you know, at least some kind of special music. I, you know, I got to go to an Indian wedding one time. Their music was quite really good. That would be, that would be unique. But so, you know, yes, I, I do dislike weddings. I have had strange things happen in weddings. But back to your point about weddings as a worship service, I yeah. did in fact have one couple uh, whose, whose, whose piety was such that they, they wanted to be married in the, in, in the context of the, the congregation's worship. They wanted, to be, they wanted their wedding service to be on a Sunday morning into the Sunday morning service, it and was you did great. that. It was fantastic. That is the creepiest thing I've ever heard, man. You could just you just add. That it is in. the creepiest thing I've ever heard, man. You just show up one Sunday morning, and all of a sudden you're at Bill and Julie's wedding. Well, it didn't even get an invitation. But this this Bill and Julie were were you know were were very very staunch you know members of the congregation pillars of the church oh. and they and they wanted to be they wanted their wedding to be a worship service of the congregation right and you can do a worship service on friday night or saturday afternoon i mean it doesn't have to be didn't you explain to them that we can worship other times in the sunday morning yeah this was a good time to do that <laughs> So you can, do private, is, you can do private baptisms too, wedding? but we prefer to do them in the bosom I, of the I congregation. I didn't realize you were so hip and trendsetting. I think this might catch on at other places. Everybody might start getting, uh, you know, married uh, on Sunday mornings. Let me tell you, you know, it's the the, the wedding oh, service man. itself. Pretty is sure. really, is really just a few minutes long. Pretty, pretty short. And well, it a, depends how much special music and how many attendants and you know, is there a unity candle or is there any no, kind of liturgical no, there dance? Isn't. There isn't. But Are you sure? I really, I'm absolutely uh, certain. I even had one. I've, I've actually had one, looked through all the rubrics and there is no mention of a unity candle. It could be whatever you want. There are options. I choose option B. I even had one couple literally tie a knot. They, they, they got married at the Yacht Club, and so they both Wait. worked. They both were employees she at the Yacht Club. threw a loop around him and, no, 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 and they, tied they a knot. Symbolically, you would like this. It was ritualistic. They ritually tied the knot. They had a special knot that they tied, and they had a special rope, and then they, you know, I, what I heard is, I, I mean, I just came in as the hired gun. I just came in as the guy who needed to sign it, and we said some prayers and brought Jesus. But, uh, you know, they, they had a special rope, and they tied it, and then apparently they framed it and put it in their house. They literally tied the knot. I mean, apparently, uh, you know, during uh, the uh, plantations, African Americans used to jump over. Jump the, the broom. broom. Yeah, we you now, know. Now I did have people who jumped the broom. Really, you in, had in people. Chicago. See, yeah. you telling me anything crazy that I've done? If you've had that as a part of worship, church, you cannot cast dispersions. That is me. a if tradition. You, oh come on! Right. Well, the, the it's first not person, some new goofy thing. Is, hey, the, honey, let's actually tie a knot in a rope and put it in our house. The That's first insane. person who did it. The first person who did it. It was an innovation. There had to be a trendsetter at one point in time. Nobody had ever jumped a broom before. And then somebody said, hey, let's try this. And they're like, yeah. Well, so we can, have, we can do another premise about how traditions develop. Yeah, somebody starts them. Somebody says, hey, let's drink root beer on Christmas Eve. That's what my ancestors did. They were Swedish, and they moved over, and they stopped drinking alcohol, and so they started drinking you know, root beer. And you didn't know it was a festive drink for Christmas to celebrate Jesus' birthday. There could be all different kinds of ways you could celebrate the two families coming this must together. This a Swedish thing. It is, when yeah. my When my wife was a little girl, and they used to go up to visit her paternal grandparents yes. in Minnesota. This is where it is. Um, she was told that there was some river up there that was a river of root beer. Well, right. Uh, that, it, there's a root beer river, but that's just because the water is dirty. It yeah. just looks brown. But let's get back so to weddings kind of here. A let, let's thing. get back to weddings here. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't have root beer at a wedding, though. Oh, absolutely I would. Really? Okay. You so can have root beer. It goes with anything. So it goes with your Swedish meatballs, it goes with your Lutefisk, but we, we really gotta get back to weddings here. Is the ceremony the important part or is the reception the important part? What do you think? Is the beverages that are drunk after in celebration of that thing? I've come to believe that the most important part is where I get to say the prayer before everybody eats at the reception. I think that's probably the most important moment. 
So the <clears throat> curmudgeonliness that I'm about to demonstrate <laughs> will shock you. Because um, I even I even think marriage might be a lost, a dead institution is what I'm hearing from so many people. But you tell me what you think is important and what we need to really plant the flag on and make the most important thing. Well, I think that you know Sarah and I have been uh, at a couple of weddings and receptions where we were you know, absolutely stunned by the amount of money that these people found necessary to put out to give this incredibly big party. Yeah, I love it. And, and the preacher is usually the cheapest part of everything. Well, you know, it's the, our, our wedding was as elaborate a liturgy as we could possibly come up with. Um, <laughs> With, with, you know, as elaborate. This, was it adorned with many? With my, it was adorned with many things. Yeah. We, we had, we had, had Sarah's father and both her brothers, uh, and and. The, the this our, sounds like a three-ring circus. If our, you ask me. our, okay, I'm listening. Yeah. Our parish pastor. That's four pastors. Anna Denver. We have four, yeah, four, four pastors. Four clergy, yeah. Uh, Oof. The, the, Who signed the, the, you know, the organist? So many questions. The organist is my oldest friend in the world, yeah. who is who is a you know terrific organist, uh, and so we had we had fantastic music. Uh, the, the 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 liturgy was it was it was so much like church that when it was time it was a, it was a Saturday night, uh -huh. um, and 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 so the altar guild of the church in Lindsborg, where Sarah had grown up and where we were married already kind of had some things ready for Sunday morning. The, the, the liturgy was so much like church that at the offertory, the ushers were walking up the aisles with, uh, with the offering plates <laughs> before one of Sarah's brothers was able to wave them off. That's a uh, different form of like the dollar dance that they do out on the reception, yeah, where they pin the dollars to the lady's dress or something. But our yeah. reception was <laughs> some cake and punch in the fellowship hall of that church. I don't want to say you're old, but that's and then you know, people and who get, came from uh, out of town were able to go yeah. over to the Swanson's house for a little nosh before they hit the road. Oh, and that was it. So it was uh, all about the wedding, and then the reception was like a, a coffee hour after church. Man, that's but so people who regard the uh, people who regard the reception as being the thing. This, I think, is one of the thing that is, things that is leading to a different understanding of marriage uh, mm. in our society, and that I know of several young couples yeah. that have put off their wedding and just live together instead, sure. because they want to save up money for you know this this reception that's going to cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, you used to know the number, by the way. It used to be $27,000 was the cost of the average yeah. uh, wedding in America. In San Diego, it's even, you know, more. I mean, and, and I think about it's just like a scene, bro, really? Man. Don't you th I mean, oh, two people for, joining their life and one what a more important day and, to spend money on. And oh, what a more important, I mean, how many flowers, I mean, I can even tell you from, you know, my, my wedding when I, you know, got married, uh, this is a problem, I got married twice, but, you know, this, this idea, my, my mom's flower wasn't big enough, so she had to upgrade her flower, you know, there's a lot of conflict in family dynamics. You can get an upgrade? She, she, she said, no, that flower that you guys picked out is too cheap and too small. We, we got to get a bigger one. And so she, she went in and talked to the florist behind, uh, you know, our back and, and said, no, but this idea of where you can spend money and uh, what you can spend money on, is there, there anything that you've uh, seen that you just said, and that's ridiculous. I, I like it in the Middle East, sometimes they do fireworks. I think, I think there should be more fireworks at weddings. I think that would, rather than the, the families arguing, you know, the different kind of fireworks. But this idea of, of how do you celebrate two people coming together? Because that's what I, I heard is that a, a wedding is a marriage ceremony. I did a, a Navy wedding once. Oh, only that once? That cured interested. you of that? Uh, only once? No, I, would, I, I, I loved it, but it, it, mm. had a, it had a rather unique little thing at the end because as, they, as the now married couple comes yeah. out of the church, the groomsmen right their um, sabers, sabers, their swords. Their, you know, oh, I love boat. it. Well, yeah, and, and they're supposed to smack her on the butt, was, and she goes, "Well, see if you took." Oh, I was, I was sorry. I, was I just, stole your thunder. I was just going to give a trigger warning. 
you know, to, to anyone who's, you know, who knows that we're ELCA pastors warning. and have no truck with anything that is not, you know, fully feminist in, in its nature. But yes, yeah. they, they, they uh -huh. slap the, the wife on her bottom with the flat of the saber and say, welcome to the Navy, Mrs. That's you know. it. Oh. And, but uh, I, I think that's only officers. I don't, I don't think regular men are not yeah, allowed they're not, they're, they're not. They, we yeah. don't have any mutinies in this our is, Navy. So. <laughs> is that why they didn't get swords? No, it's because oh, officers. I was thinking that might be really officers good. Officers have the president's commission. You could have a mutiny in a marriage, but you know, at, at a wedding, there's so many things that Yes, that if, the, if the husband forgets his place, <laughs> then yes, that's, huh. that could definitely be a mutiny. Have you ever had a fainter at a wedding? No, I haven't had that, really? although I, I yeah. have. I have been in situations where people have had to be reminded, you know, don't don't lock your knees. Oh, see, they used to, we, you know, in, in Fargo at my first call, it was my very first wedding at all, a huge wedding. I think there were, you know, seven attendants on each side. So, you know, yeah, it's just a yeah. huge group of people. And I, I stand up and I'm really excited. It's my first chance to preach at a wedding. There was probably... 350 people at you know the reception the wedding there was only about 200 people but at the wedding 200 people i was really excited and uh, yeah. and it was fascinating because as i started to talk i opened my mouth and audibly from about the third groomsman down he said get on with it <laughs> loud enough for everybody to hear yeah i think they had, had uh, you know had a rough morning with the pictures and everything he was ready to be done I and see. uh yeah like you say the the ceremony isn't that long i mean the the worship service even if you have a lot of music in it and a lot of pomp and you know they walk down the aisle really slow um now, but if there's you one, make it a communion yeah. service, then, of oh, course, it's long. it's way too long. But this this idea... No, no, no. <laughs> it's way too long. No, no, man. no it's not. We, we got it. It's we got, longer. Got TikTok, Pastor. Don't Tick, make the value judgment oh, here. Oh, man. But Although, I did have one... one I, I did a, a wedding here in San Diego at Point Loma. Beautiful. Where I was standing, Beautiful. you know, at the cliff so that they could look out on the Sunset Beach? Beach. No, or Sunset Cliffs. No, it was up oh, it was Point, at, Point at the, 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 the lighthouse at Point Loma. Oh, at but the right, lighthouse. But right, it had me stand, you know, right at the cliff so that they could be looking out in, onto the ocean. Oh, I love that. And, uh, you know, as I was talking about how my, you know, wedding homilies are always quite brief, yeah. uh, the groom said, and he was a, a friend of ours, said, you know, I, I, I hope that's true because you know how if someone steps toward you, you take that little involuntary step back? <laughs> he said, so... When, when I think you ought to be done, I'm just going to take a step <laughs> toward you and, you know, you'll be down there and we'll be finished. Oh, I love that. So. For, for me, I, I did one at, you know, on the beach at, you know, you know the La Jolla, you know, beach and tennis club. Oh, really? yeah. Oh, nice really. One of the, my favorite places to do a wedding at. If, if anybody's getting married there, you know, I'll be happy to go there. Here's your Food man. is really good. But it was on the beach, probably about 100 people. And, and, you know, I got my back to the waves. They're all staring right at the waves. And, and, and the water, the tide is coming up and coming up. And it's right <laughs> next to the marine room where, you know, the waves come up to the windows. And so I'm there. And, of course, as I'm preaching, it's creeping up and creeping up. And I don't notice it. Of by by the time the ceremony was over, we, we would have been in the water. And so it was it was pretty fun, though. It got people's attention. They weren't really listening to me, but they were really worried they were about watching. the bride and getting they're... wet. They were really worried about the bride getting they, wet. They weren't afraid that you might be, you know, no, no, swept no, out no by concern. the undertow or no something. No concern whatsoever. Uh, you know, for me, I, I did have one of my mentors, one of my internship supervisors, who he, he told me he, he didn't like weddings because... In the end, he said he was just doing it for money, like a prostitute. He was getting right. ordered around and told what to do, and the only reason he was there, the only purpose he served was whatever they needed him. And he said he felt used yeah. after every wedding. And, he felt and, used. And I, I don't have that same opinion. I feel you know, good that I get to connect with these people on a special day. It's a, a wonderful celebration. You get to meet family and have interesting conversations. I never know whose table I'm going to get to sit at at the reception. Usually I'm either at the one with the family or I'm back you know, at table like 19 the with corner, the people right. in the corner. Yeah. But So it's really, for me, I've talked to some fascinating people who, who I would have never met. True enough. 
that, that's you know, not fun for you, though. You and I both have colleagues, though, who, who serve in very beautiful churches. Oh. You know, and when you've the got... The Wedding Chapel Church. When, you, when, yeah. you, when, you, you know, when you've got the beautiful church, then you've got, you know, the perfect storm of people who have no relationship to the church as being, you know, members of it, but they want to get married, you know, in this beautiful setting, basically as a backdrop for their wedding pictures. And you've also got people sometimes, you know, in the governing bodies of a congregation yeah. like that, who, you know, realize that there's money to be made on this, and there is. I mean, I know of, I know of, of very beautiful churches that basically, you know, during the wedding season, you know, like in, in springtime. Yeah, in uh, California there really you, isn't a wedding season. You've got season, them, but well, yeah. but I'm thinking of, you know, other right. parts of the country where yeah. it's like when the weather starts to get nice, then pretty much every Saturday, it's a, the, the place where a, a cousin of mine was married in uh, mm -hmm. in Boulder, Colorado, Episcopal Church, they, they, they it was a 20 minute thing. Hmm. You know, after after this after this. So service did they have a over, revolving door? Yes, yeah, so we were coming in. We were we were literally we were, we were standing in the in the in the pews in the nave of, of the church mm. chatting when you know a a, 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 a functionary or you know, an usher or something, you know comes up to us and says you need to leave now you know the next wedding is gonna start there was say there were you know this. twenty minute blocks. And I remember one church in Hawaii that did this because it was right on the beach, and so yeah. they just continued. They would they would have four and five a day. Yeah. You're, so what you're telling me is you're you're against that as an opportunity to build relationships and connect and and really get to know people. You don't think that's an evangelistic moment? The the policy in every congregation I've served has been that weddings are a part of our ministry for members of the congregation. Oh, and you're so, so militant, Paul. When somebody, so, we gotta get you to like when somebody people. comes and says, we "Oh, like we want to get Paul. married in your pretty little church," and this All Saints is a pretty little church. It is. I, I, I always say, "Well, come on a Sunday morning, see if you like us. If you want to join oh. this congregation, then of course you can what be married here." What a lost opportunity, Paul! What a missed opportunity for right. Jesus. Yes. Well, even your disdain of the reception because because Jesus the, the context the context that you're discussing all the <laughs> these weddings for these people who come trumping in to do their their little thing in your space as a as a, a back in Jesus space uh, as a backdrop for the right now for their trying. wedding pictures. They, yeah. I mean. How many of these people are going to hear your evangelistic message? I don't know how, how that's going to really work. I asked my, my brother-in-law. My experience has been yeah. that even in, pre, in mandatory premarital counseling, you can't get anybody to, to listen to anything when you talk about how the wedding is just one day, your marriage is the rest of your whole life. Apparently that's you're not that much fun to chat with, Paul. No, Come on, get I'm this not, going I'm, here. I'm, not, is... I'm not fun. <laughs> But I do oh, have a funny uh, story. Okay, before funny story. we before we but, wrap but up the just, wedding, can I pause tradition. you for a second here? Of course, because Jesus performed his first miracle, he did. and of course, when Mary comes up to him, his blessed mother comes up to him and says, "We got to fix this. We got to do something." Of course, he's a little frustrated, kind of like you, a little sour to his mom, and says, "Hey, this doesn't involve us. We don't. We're not. We're just here." What is that to you and to me? Yeah, and so this idea that, you know, Mary knows this is an opportunity, Jesus. This is a, something you should really take advantage of because, you know, people will like you. So gladden their hearts. The, gladden their hearts with wine even, you know, with, with give them a little drink and, and enjoy some time together. The thing that, that intrigues me about your suggestion here is that we should follow uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary's advice uh, in this matter. And I, I, as long as we're not worshiping Mary, okay. I'm okay with listening to Mary. I like the Magnificat. I think she's got some interesting points and some wonderful things. I think she was a good mother. I just don't think we should worship her. Well, thanks for getting that anti-Mariolatry <laughs> point in there. But at the same time, I mean, you're the guy who brought her in here, and so I did, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I just I, I would I, dance with her. I mean, Jesus's mom. I would I would you know go on the dance floor and once around or something. Yeah. I would hang out with Mary if you know, I was at Jesus's mother's table at the wedding. I would feel is, so blessed. There is no way. Apologies to your mom that that the Blessed Virgin Mary would have complained about her corsage. 
that Joseph oh, got. Oh, um, man. Well, Jesus never got married, and so it would have to be one of his brothers or sisters who got married, and so it, it wouldn't be there. But it, it's even that, that wedding, to bring a little biblical stuff, one of my favorite ideas is why Mary comes to Jesus is, you know, because Jesus showed up with, you know, this group of interlopers who hadn't RSVP'd and they drank up all they, the wine. They were wedding so crashers. They were wedding crashers and drank up all the wine. And so Mary said, you're the guy who, you know, brought these bums who drank it all. We got we to gotta fix this. That's one of my favorite interpretations. Even, even the other the idea that maybe Nathaniel, it was his wedding. Or Cana, that, right, that, that right. he was the spurned suitor. That he could have been the guy. I mean, there's so many wonderful traditions about that. And, and weddings, so, I just think, are wonderful. There's exegesis and there's eisegesis. <laughs> hey, sometimes we can have fun. I think Sometimes we can just let our imagination go and think a little bit. It doesn't have to be true. We can just think, hey, Jesus went to a wedding. I wonder if the preacher was boring. <laughs> I wonder if anybody told the, the guy, hey, get on with it. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. I, I really don't know the answer. Really? I've never thought about it and probably never will again once the <laughs> jammer goes off. I can, I am really blessed that I could make you think something that you would have never thought well, before. I really got a, that, that earworm inside you and it's just going to bring you, bring you to some enlightenment there. I'm glad we could talk about weddings today and we hope You're not going to let me tell my funny story? Oh, what's your funny story? Okay, so I've got a funny wedding story. Now you got my hopes up. Well, it, it is pretty funny. I mean, I because because I end up looking like a real doofus in I'm it. I'm laughing already. So here's the thing. I'm laughing already. You know, we you, lots of people want to incorporate a ring blessing into oh, the uh, I do. In, into I do. the into the ceremony. I, even though that's that's not actually a, a thing that's in a symbol. our book. Symbol. I yep. of course take the ring blessing out of the Book of Common Prayer naturally. That's fine. And uh, and so what I do is I have the uh, the the best man and the maid or matron of honor put the respective rings you know on this open book. Beautiful. And, I do uh, the same. And then and and what I what I do is I then put one hand on them so that yeah, they don't won't go that. flying. Yeah. Okay. And then I turn around to the altar to do the blessing of the rings. Hmm. But one time at Christ the Mediator uh -oh. in Chicago, I didn't have uh -oh. my hand down on there quite good enough. And so the bride's ring oh, went rolling off. We had this we had this sort of brick pattern in the floor oh, of the chancel there. I, I hope you have carpet. And it's rolling. And the problem is it's rolling toward the sacristy door, which is back in the corner of I the I thought you were going to say like a radiator grate. Oh, oh, no, that would have been, oh. been even worse. But it was bad enough that the, the memorable moment, you know, the, the memorable moments of weddings are not the things that are all planned out, but the goofy stuff that happens. That's what you remember forever, like people trying to bring up offering plates at, at Sarah's and my wedding, or like this, uh, this ring rolling away at Irwin and Tina's wedding, where you know here I am in all of my vestments because this was a Eucharist, uh, you know, trying to sort of scuttle after this ring before it goes you know off into the sacristy, and then coming back rather sheepishly uh, and finishing up the ring blessing and going back to the giving of rings. And the thing that's great about stuff like this is that when I turned back around after the ring blessing, of course, you know, what you get to see is the wonderful smiles of the, the people who you really like uh, and have the privilege of officiating at, at their wedding. And this stupid thing that I've done has brought real <laughs> mirth into their life. Uh, and, that's, and, and, and that's actually a beautiful thing. So, See, you gladden their wedding by being a bit of a clown. I love to hear that you got into some antics and uh, weddings. Uh, one of my favorite ones is I got to be the custodian. When you're the pastor's kid, you get to be the wedding custodian for, for you know, sometimes get a little extra, you know, 40 bucks for vacuuming and doing Ooh. the bathrooms. It was fantastic. Well, of course, at one of them, the, my, my dad didn't really like, you know, the, the ring bearers, you know, the, the flower girl and the ring bearer. Because, of course, one time the kid got on the altar rail and started riding it like a horse. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the other one was the kid took the pillow and started flipping it up in the air and catching it. Yeah, my dad really did like yeah. that. Little kids are so devout. <laughs> well, you, you tell everybody thanks for joining in.
Okay, I'll tell her. Okay, first. thank you for joining us, and, and good luck with your wedding. God bless. We'll see you next time. Ha, ha, ha.